the American Association of Veterinary Medical Colleges guidelines do not recommend terminal surgeries as a method of teaching even using donated animals. I'm a veterinarian and multiple veterinarians have reached out to me about Washington State University College of Veterinary Medicine and their veterinary school classes that involve killing healthy animals. We obtained records via public records request of what types of classes involve animal killing. Here are some of them. Ruminant surgery elective. This protocol is for teaching surgeries and procedures to vet students. This protocol requests up to 14 goats per year. Pregnant does will undergo cesarean sections. And if the kids are premature, they and the doe will be killed. If the kids are viable, they and the doe will be recovered. All other goats undergo terminal surgeries. The goats are purchased and appear otherwise healthy. There are plenty of goats out there that could use cesarean sections, plenty of ruminants, plenty of cows. In fact, there's a shortage of veterinarians providing services to farmed animals. So you would think that there'd be plenty of opportunities for students to observe and participate in these procedures, especially since many of those farmed animals without veterinarian that's affordable would have their lives ended anyway. Here's another one. PM 573P LA Junior Surgery. This protocol is for teaching anatomy, surgery, and anesthesia to vet students. Up to 60 goats or sheep and eight horses are requested for these terminal labs. Goats and sheep are purchased and appear to be otherwise healthy. The horses are donated, purchased, or transferred from internal protocols. We have more effective ways of teaching surgery. I would like to see Washington State University do away with these laboratories. The problem is whenever we raise awareness about these labs, the deans get more emails from veterinarians who tell them how important terminal labs are and that they should keep the labs. They get more emails from those people who are supportive of keeping the labs than they get from veterinarians who are asking them to remove these labs. Why is it that those of us who have come to realize these laboratories are harming our profession's reputation as caring advocates for animals? Why are we so quiet about this? Why aren't we the ones to reach out? Because we learned in vet school to keep our mouth shut.